like. Yeah! <laughs> All right. For these first few problems, we're going to use uh, the properties of equality. So for this first one, we're going to subtract 3 on both sides. And I should get z equals negative 9. I'm trying to undo what's being done to the variable. Uh, number 2, you can see that the t is being multiplied by negative 0.2. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 0.2. And oh, could probably do this without a calculator, but I'm kind of feeling like 2.6 divided by, what'd y'all get for 2.6 divided by negative 0.2? Negative 13. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that's right. <laughs> oh wait, wait, should be, yeah, negative 13. All right, for number three, we need to multiply both sides by five. And so I get n equals negative 10. All right, we're off to a good start here. Number four, we start getting some two-step equations. So we just want to make sure to do the addition and subtraction before the multiplication and division. So we're going to subtract 11 on both sides. Ooh, 11 looks like a, I don't know what that is. There we go. Uh, so we got 3y equals negative 27. Uh, then we got to divide both sides by 3. So I should get y equals negative 9. Wow. Really going to have to step up my game in the handwriting department here. All right, now number 5, a little tricky here. Uh, I'm going to start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So you get 5 equals negative b. Now to get rid of that negative sign, you kind of have two options. You can either multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1. I'm going to divide. And so I end up with b equals negative 5. Number 6, we've got to combine like terms. So make sure that you combine the n and the 5n. That will give me 6n plus 7 equals 43. Subtract 7 on both sides. 47 minus, 43 minus 7. Uh, 36. I told y'all going to find out real quick that my arithmetic is uh, not the best. It's all right. The nice thing is uh, you don't really have to be that good at arithmetic to be good at math. I know that seems a little counterintuitive, but okay. Anyway, uh, divide by 6 on both sides, and we get 6. All right, number 7. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So we get x over 7 equals 2, and then multiply 7 on both sides. I should get x equals 14. For number 8, we're going to combine the like terms, the 8x and the negative 2x. And I get 6x minus 3 equals 21. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. 6x equals 24. Divide by 6. And I get x equals, was that 4? Right. All of our answers match up so far? Uh-oh. Yeah or no? Yeah, it's the first page. Good so far? Oh, great. We're off to a good start. I'm going to combine my like terms here. And I get 12q uh, minus 17 equals negative 5. So I'm going to add 17 to both sides. 12q equals 12. Oh, okay. Divide both sides by 12. And I get Q equals 1.
All right, so we'll move this up a little bit here. Now, number 10 is a little different than some of these. Um, you know, what, what you really have with this guy over here, I did this in a different color just to kind of emphasize it, uh, is what you really have is one third times Z plus two, okay? So um, there's two ways we could handle this. We could either multiply both sides by three or divide both sides by one third or distribute. I think the, the best way to kind of go about this is gonna to be to multiply both sides by three. So that, that'll allow the one third times three to equal one. And so we're left with uh, Z plus two equals 18. Subtract two. I get Z equals 16. We'll treat number 11 the same way. Okay, just to, just to kind of point this out again, what this really means. I'm like really liking this tablet. It's like making my life a lot easier. You know, so it kind of looks like that. You don't really need to write it like that, but I just want to point that out if anyone's confused about how to handle that. Uh, you don't. You really don't need to show that step. All right, so uh, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 7. And that gives me t minus 4 equals negative 14. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And I get t equals negative 10. Number 12 has got some combining like terms to take care of up front. We need to put these two guys together. So I get H minus 1. Oh, what the? Equals, uh, would that be 8H minus 8? So this is a case where we've got variables on both sides. And the way to handle that is to collect all the linear terms on one side and the constants on the other. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do this all in one step here. I'm going to subtract oh, 7, what am I doing here, 8h from both sides. And this is going to allow my, uh, uh, my linear terms to, to get pushed over here to the left-hand side. So I'll only have h's on the left side, and I want my constants on the right-hand side. So I need to move that 1. And I'm also going to add 1 to both sides and just kind of do both of these simultaneously. So we got h minus 8h is negative 7h. Negative 1 plus 1, 0, and that was, that's intentional. We want those to sort of cancel out. 8h minus 8h is also 0. Again, intentional. We want that to go away. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So now we've got a nice little one-step equation here. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 7. So I get h equals 1. All right, let's take a look at uh, some distributive property problems. I'm going to distribute the negative 4. I get negative 8z minus 24 minus 12 equals 4. Uh, I'm going to combine my like terms here, the minus 12 minus 24. I'll be left with negative 8z minus 36 equals 4. Move that up a little bit. And then we got, let's see, what do we have here? Plus 36 on both sides. Uh-oh. This is going to divide out very nicely, is it? I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8 and get Z equals... Hey, did anyone solve number 13? Did y'all get 40 divided by negative 8? And what is that? Oh, negative 5. Wow, that's embarrassing. The what? Oh, no, yeah, this is going up. This is going up for sure. All right. I don't have time for two recordings. I can distribute this three halves. 
just using this derivative property here. I'm going to combine our like terms to get 3 halves x. Oh, not equals. I'm trying to go a little too fast here. Uh, minus 8 equals 19. Then we need to add 8 to both sides. So we have 3 halves x equals 27. So a couple options here. We can either do it in two steps and multiply this by 2 and this by 2 and then divide both sides by 3. Or we could just knock it all at once and say divided by 3 halves. When you divide by 3 halves, that's equivalent to multiplying by 2 over 3. So we get 27 divided by 3 would be 9 times 2 is 18. Eighteen sound good for number fourteen? Number fourteen? Yeah, is that what you get? Did you get eighteen? Yeah, eighteen. All right, looking good. And then let's see, we've got we need to combine our like terms for number fifteen. So the seven W plus eight W is gonna be fifteen W. And I'm going to subtract 2 on either side. So that's going to give me 3 equals 15w. Oh, do we get a fraction here? Is this our first fraction? W, did we have a fraction before? Maybe we did. I don't think so. All right, 3 divided by 15 will reduce to 1 over 5. So I get 1 fifth. For number 15. Good? Uh, yeah, yep, yep, point two, one fifth sounds good. Number 16, we're going to collect everything. So, uh, we're going to collect our linear terms on the left. So to do that, I'm going to do minus 4n on either side. And we're going to collect our constants to the right. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Just knock both of those out at once. And so I get negative n equals 4. Divide both sides by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign, and I get net, uh, n equals negative 4. For the next one, I need to start with the distributive property. I get 5 oops, plus 5x equals 5x plus 5. Now, if you notice that you have the same thing on both sides, you can just stop there and recognize that as a true statement, uh, meaning that any x value that you plug in there it will make that true. So we're going to say infinitely many solutions. And for number 18, I'm going to distribute the 3 and get 3n plus 12. Distribute the one half, and I get uh, one half times six is three. One half times four is two. Oh, I can see my my three ends are going to cancel out here, so I'm not even going to bother uh, collecting my constants here because I can kind of already see what's going to happen here. Three n minus three n zero, so both of those will cancel out. And I'm left with twelve equals two. Uh, which obviously is not true. That's never true. And so when you end up with a false statement here, this is one of those other special cases, you get no solution. All right, at number 19, we are going to distribute the negative 9. And the 4. So you can kind of do both of those at the same time. Right, then we want to collect our linear terms on the left-hand side and our constants on the right-hand side. So to do that, oops, oh, oh, geez. There we go. Now we're going to subtract 4t from both sides. And then we're also going to subtract 18 on both sides. And that way we'll have our t on the left and we'll have a constant on the right.
So we get 5t, this zeroes out right here. Well, it looks like we've got our first mistake of the year. Now that I'm going back and reviewing these homework videos, I'd like to correct um, as many mistakes as I can find. So uh, let's go ahead and fix this. Now, before I had said that this thing, uh, this 9t minus 4t, I think I said it was 5t. Obviously, that's not right. It's negative 13t. So we'll go ahead and fix that. And then neg 18 minus 18 is 0, so these um, effectively cancel each other out. 4t minus 4t is also 0, so those cancel each other out. And then we've got this negative 60 minus 18, which is negative 78. Then we can divide both sides by negative 13. And I hope that divides evenly. I think it does. So we've got negative 78 divided by negative 13. This is something that I'm just going to put in the calculator, but it comes out to be 6. So in this case, t is 6, not whatever I got on the previous problem, um, or the previous attempt, I should say. So that answer does check out. So just make sure when you get an answer, if it doesn't feel right, you check it. Just go back, and what I, I know you couldn't really see what I'm doing, but what I'm doing is I'm going in the calculator, and I'm plugging this number in, to t up here and just typing it out and make sure that this side of the equation is the same as this side of the equation so i go negative nine uh you know times in parentheses six minus two see what that equals and then do four times six minus 15 see what that equals so anyway uh, i feel i feel a little better about what we have now uh what happened to all my distribution there we go so let's see if we can there we go. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay. Whew, that took a little bit longer than I thought. So let's do number 20. I'm going to distribute the 3. So we get 21r minus 6 equals 21r minus 6. Notice here we got the same thing on both sides. So if you notice that, um, we're, we're essentially done. Just like we did up here where we had 5x plus 5 on both sides. Here we got 21r minus 6 on both sides. We're just going to say, again, infinitely many solutions. Number 21, let's go through this. So uh, we're going to start with the distributive property and get 6x plus 12. Uh-oh, look at this. 6x minus 12. So I can already kind of see what's going to happen here, but let's work through it. Um, I'm going to start by using those properties of equality. I'm going to subtract 6x on both sides. And the, what you'll notice is the variables all cancel out here. So when that happens, I'm either going to be left with a true statement or a false statement. And in this case, I get a false statement. So anytime you all your variables cancel out, if you get a true statement, it'll be infinitely many solutions, but a false statement means that there is no solution. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So we're solving some quadratics here, and... Uh, these are already factored, so these should be pretty easy. We're just going to go directly to the uh, the zero product property. So we're going to set this equal to zero and this equal to zero. So we can set we can solve these two individually. Uh, over here on the left, we're going to subtract six from both sides and get three x equals negative six. Uh, this one over here, we're going to well actually let's just finish this one. We're going to divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals negative 2. Um, or, and then over here, we're going to add 10 to both sides. We get 2x equals 10, and divide both sides by 2, so I get x equals 5. All good. For number 23, we'll treat that the same way. We're going to use the zero product property, set each one of these equal to zero. So we got p plus 3 equals zero, or 5p plus 1 equals zero. Should have given you a little bit more room to work here. 
Uh, over here, we'll subtract 3 from both sides and get P equals negative 3. Over here, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides and get 5P equals negative 1 and divide both sides by uh, 5. So we'll say P equals negative 3 or P equals, uh, that's going to be a fraction. We'll just leave it as, as a fraction. This is not, uh, we can't simplify that at all. Uh, number 24, when you're squaring a binomial, that's the same thing as saying you're multiplying uh, whatever you're squaring by itself. So it's equivalent to this. We could use zero product property, but honestly, it's not really necessary because as you can see, we're going to get the same factor in both cases. Uh, so we get y minus 10 equals 0, y minus 10 equals 0. So we get y equals 10. Um, let's take a look at 25. So 25 is already factored for you as well. It just looks a little different because we just have a monomial instead of a binomial as our first factor. But we're still going to solve it exactly the same way. We've got two things whose product is zero, so we can use the zero product property. So we could set each one of these factors equal to zero. Move this up a little bit. So uh, this one's already solved, but here we're gonna need to add five to both sides. So we're gonna say x equals zero or x equals five. What you'll notice on all these cases where you have a monomial like that as your factor with a variable, uh, you're always going to get that x equals zero because you're just going to divide by that coefficient. Um, so you'll see that's going to happen on every time. Number 26, same thing where you use the zero product property. Uh, and so we get 6d equals zero and d plus 8 equals zero. So the first uh, factor is going to result in d equals zero. It's kind of what I was talking about before. You can kind of expect that to happen when it's set up like this. Uh, and then we're going to subtract eight from both sides. And so we're going to get d equals negative eight. For number 27, same thing, y'all. We're going to set each one of these factors equal to zero. And so dividing both sides by negative 3 gives me 0. So I get t equals 0 or t equals negative 7. Because I subtracted 7 from both sides. I don't think I said that. Okay, so this is kind of nice that it's already factored. But if it's not factored up front, you're going to have to look for that GCF. Anytime you've got a quadratic equation that doesn't have a constant, in other words, like you don't see like a plus 7 or a minus 10 or any constant on there, then you can factor out that GCF. Oops. So on this one, we're going to factor out a t. So we get t times 3t minus 1 equals 0. So we're going to set each one of these equal to zero and then solve. And over here, we've got 3t minus 1 equals zero. So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We get 3t equals negative 1. And then dividing both sides by 3 is going to give us our solutions. t equals zero, uh, if I can get that to come up, or t equals negative 1 third. Wait, wouldn't it be no, t equals one-third and not negative one-third? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. Yep. Little mistake here, right? It's right here. I should. That's what happens when you don't show your work, y'all. I probably would have caught it had I actually written that down. That's a good catch. I'm guilty of my own crime. So, yeah, this should be a plus one on both sides. So this should actually be positive one here. So this should be a positive one third. There we go. That's better. Number 29, I'm going to factor out a 5y, which leaves me with y plus 2 as my remaining factor. Uh, so I'm going to set each one of these equal to 0. I'm allowed to do that. Again, you guys are probably sick and tired of me saying zero product property, but we're using it so often here. 
Um, and so we get y equals 0 or y equals negative 2. Let's see what our GCF here is on number 30. Uh, I think we can factor out a 3n. And that leaves me with 7 plus 4n. Yeah, that's going to work. Set each one of these equal to 0. So we get n equals 0. Or... Let's see, 0 minus 7 is negative 7, so we're going to have 4n equals negative 7, or n equals negative 7 fourths. Almost done with this third page here. Number 31. And I can factor out a 5c here. So that gives me 5 plus 2c. Uh, so I'm going to set each one of these equal to zero. Hello. Connor Smith for dismissal. Okay. All right, let's see if we can find him. Ah. All right. So we're going to divide both sides by five, and I get z equals zero. Or uh, let's see here. We're going to subtract five. Okay. I didn't really leave myself a lot of room here. So we get subtract 5 from both sides gives us 2c equals negative 5. We divide both sides by 2. So I get c equals 0 from here, or c equals negative 5 halves. Number 32, hmm, what can we do here? We're going to need to, uh, this is negative 4r squared minus 28r equals 0. Now we can, we can factor out a negative 4r, which leaves us with r minus 7 equals 0. All right, error number 2. When I factored out this negative 4r, I guess I was moving too quickly because negative 28r divided by negative 4r should be a positive 7. So this should be plus 7. So our solutions are not going to change a whole lot from what I got originally. Um, but at this point, we're going to use the zero products property and set each factor equal to 0. We'll solve them individually. Uh, so if negative 4r is 0 or r plus 7 is 0, then either uh, r is 0 or r is negative 7. So these are the, the, the actual correct solutions here. Um, so r equals 0 or r equals negative 7. All right, now I've got that all fixed up. Uh, let's go back to the original video. Number 33. Our GCF here is going to be 6m. So we get m plus 2 as our other factor. Whoa, whoa. Not sure what happened there. All right, so this is going to equal 0. This is going to equal 0. So either m will be 0 or m will be negative 2. All right, let's take a look at number 34. And we do need to factor this. Um, we don't have a GCF to worry about, so I'm just going to set up my binomial parentheses. And uh, let's see, we've got A and A. So what I need to do is find two numbers whose product is 64, but whose sum is 16. So I think that's going to be 8 and 8. Now, this is the first time we've seen this where we've got two factors that are the same. Um, you still kind of solve it the same way. You know, set each factor equal to zero because we're going to use the zero product property. But uh, what you'll notice, so we just get the same answer, right? And you don't have to write the same answer twice. There is some, uh, or I should say there are 
some consequences to having a repeated solution like this in turn, uh, when it comes to graphing polynomials. We don't really have to worry about that yet, but just know that uh, there is some significance to having a, a solution which occurs twice. Okay, right? So in this one, I think I was just talking too much and not paying attention to what I was writing. I lost a negative sign on here. It should be negative 8. Number 35, looks like it's going to be kind of similar here. Uh, no, no GCF to worry about, so I've got K and K. Uh, so I need two numbers whose product is 24 and whose sum is negative 10. So I'm looking for two values that multiply. Okay, I think I got it. So because we're multiplying to get them positive, they both have to be the same sign. Uh, it, it, and since the middle number is negative, they, they both have to be negative. So the only way to get there is going to be negative 4, negative 6. So my two solutions here are going to be 5k uh, minus 4 equals 0, k minus 6 equals 0. So I get k equals 4 or k equals 6. For number 36, we do have a GCF, so I'm going to factor that out. See, that'd be 8. Is that right? Ooh, this is, uh, is going to Oh, yeah, 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 I think this is going to work. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That gives me x squared minus 2x minus 8. Uh, so I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 8. Oh, oops. This cami has a mind of its own sometimes. So yeah, we've got uh, the negative 8. There we go. So two numbers that multiply to give me negative 8, but add up to negative 2. So that's going to be negative 4 and 2. So using the zero product property, I can say either x minus 4 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. So my solutions are going to be 4. Now other solution, uh, I got kind of messy. The other solution is going to be negative 2. Oh gosh, my x is, what is even happening here? There we go. This is probably the ugliest four I've ever seen. Okay. Anyway, there you go. Let's look at a few more of these. I think this is the last page. Yeah, we're almost done. Okay, so this next one, uh, we're looking for two values whose product is negative 7 and whose sum is negative 6. So that's going to be minus 7 plus 1. And hopefully you've been working enough of these to kind of just recognize what the solutions are going to be straight from here. Uh, so I'm going to have m equals 7 or m equals negative 1. Number 38 needs to be set equal to 0 before we do anything else. So I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. And that will give me n squared minus 5n minus 24 equals 0. So the two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 and add up to negative 5 are going to be, uh, let's see here, negative 8 and 3. So we get n equals 8 or n equals negative 3. Number 39, we're going to have to move some stuff around. Kind of like we did in 38, but there's two things we need to move. We need to subtract. Go ahead and change colors here. We are. Let me, I'm actually going to blow this one up a little bit. I'm going to subtract the 8b from both sides. Now there's no like terms to combine that with, but I need this over on the other side to make it equal zero anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to add 10 to both sides. Got to squeeze that in there. 
So that's going to be, let's see, b squared minus 8b, and then 5 plus 10 is 15. So two numbers that multiply to give me 15, but uh, whose sum is negative 8, can be negative 5, and negative 3. So my solutions are going to be 5 or 3. Oh, whoa, 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 that's too, it's too much. It's too much. What is going on with that number 41? All right, number 40. We're going to, let's see, we've got a GCF of 2 here, so let's go ahead and divide that out. Okay, and uh, we'll divide both sides by 2. That'll give me x squared plus 8x plus 15. All right, so let me, let me clean that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 15 but add up to 8. should be 5 and 3. So get x plus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. I'm struggling with that equal sign here. Let's make, let's make that a little nicer. Okay, so uh, from here, uh, we've got, uh, well, we can just pretty much go straight to our solutions here. We've got x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 3. Yeah, I'm working on it right now, actually. Uh, number 41, let's take a quick look at that. All right, let's take a look at 41 here. Oh, goodness, we've got a mess on our hands with this one. Oh, I really don't like this, this number here. That's kind of big. I'm don't know if I'm going to be able to mentally factor. Is this even factorable? Let's see what we're working with here. So we got negative 18x and then, wait, 18? No, that'd be divided by 2. Let's fix that up. That should be 12. And then, oh, well... I might have to break up the, the old calculator on this one. We got 1,152 divided by 3. It's going to be 384. Uh, yeah, this is not going to be factorable. In fact, I'm not even sure there's a solution here. I think there might be a typo in this equation somewhere. This just doesn't seem right. Uh, let's try to verify whether or not, um, let me just go check real quick. Okay, I went to Desmos. I looked up the graph. There's no solutions here. Uh, let's just go ahead and omit this problem. There's obviously a typo or something going on. Uh, this is not what I intended to give you. Um, so let's just forget this 41. I think we could solve the rest of them, but this was not a good problem. Uh, let's, so let's, yeah, let's erase. We don't really need the rest of this then. Yeah, what an ugly problem. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, maybe 42. Let's see if we have more luck with that one. Let's go ahead and factor out the 10. It's got some big numbers again. Jeez, let's see. Well, dividing out the 10, maybe it'll work out a little bit better than the last one. Okay, yeah, I think this one's going to work out. There we go. So we're going to factor out the 10. We're going to divide everything by 10. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus 5x minus 24. Oops. Uh, minus 24 equals 0. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 and add up to negative 5. So my factors of 24 are like 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. Up, oh, 3 and 8, that's where it is. Because we want a negative 8 and a positive 3. 
Okay, so if I solve both of those linear binomials, after setting them equal to zero, I should get x equals eight or x equals negative three. We got just three left here. This is kind of this is probably the longest homework all year in terms of number of problems. Uh, this is quite a lot. So number 43, uh, we do have this coefficient one six. Now, there's two ways you could sort of handle this. One is to do like we did for all the other ones that had that coefficient is, is to factor it out as a DCF or another strategy we could use here is actually just multiply everything by six. So I can multiply this whole side by six, multiply this whole side by six, and, uh, and that'll take care of that fraction for us because one six times six is one. So we get X squared, two times six is 12. So plus 12 X plus 36, and then zero times anything is zero. We get a nice little quadratic here. Two numbers that multiply to give me 36 and add up to 12. Uh, it's gonna be six and six. So again, we only get one solution here. It is a repeated solution, uh, which will have consequences or uh, significance rather. Uh, little down the road. For right now, we'll just say x is negative 6 and move on. Number 44, let's get this equal to 0, and then we'll take care of the fraction. So we got 1 fifth x squared minus 2x uh, plus 5 equals 0. I'm going to multiply everything by 5. We get x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. I don't really like how that plus turned out. I know you guys are thinking it doesn't matter, but uh, looking back at this, I want to make sure it makes sense. Okay, uh, so two numbers that multiply to give me 25 give you negative 10. It's going to be minus 5, minus 5. And so solving both of those, I get x equals 5 and x equals 5. I don't have to write it twice. You know, if it's, if once a solution, always a solution. And finally, we've got number 45, which two ways we can kind of tackle this. Now, one, which would be kind of a pain, is trying to factor out this 2, because, look, 2 is not a factor of 11, so we don't want to do that. Could use quadratic formula here, but I want to try to avoid that if I can, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to factor. So I know my factors. Uh, oops. There we go. Undo. Let's clean up those parentheses. So my, I will have two factors, if it's factorable at all. Um, the first two terms have got to be 2x and x, because they have to multiply to give me 2x squared. There's not really any other combination that will work for that. Now, for the last terms, they've got to multiply to give me 5. So there's only really one option there. That's 5 and 1. Now, the question is going to be, is it going to be plus 1 and plus 5 or the other way around? So I'm just going to take a guess, check to see if it's right, and then go from there. So uh, let's see here. 2x times 5 would be 10x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm checking. I'm going to multiply these outer terms and the inner terms and see if their sum is 11x. So out here we've got 10x. Yeah, gosh. There we go. 10x and then 1 times x is x. So actually, yeah, my, my first guess was correct because um, 10x plus x is 11x. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to be the right combination here. And this is the only one that had that coefficient that was not factorable. So uh, just a little, little curveball at you. Let's, and so that we can go ahead and solve it just like we did the other ones, though. We got 2x plus 1 equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0, and we're going to solve both of these. So I'm going to subtract 1, 2x equals negative 1. Here, subtract 5, x equals negative. Oh, what the? Did not want, I clicked on something. I don't know if you guys can see that, but clicking off of that. Uh, x equals negative 5. And so finally, if I divide by 2, I get x equals negative 1 half or x equals negative 5. And that's it. That's the last problem. So just uh, real quick, make sure you omit this problem. The rest of them should work out okay, though. Uh, Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.